And on today, we are in part two of a message compilation entitled Metanoia. Everybody say Metanoia. Metanoia. Oh, come on. You got to say it like you're from New Orleans. Say Metanoia. Metanoia. There you go. There you go. That word Metanoia in the Greek, it means to change your mind. And, and as I was doing some further study, I, I found out that the word Metanoia is more than just a biblical term. It's actually a military term. So in, 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 the, in the armies back, back in those times, if the army was going like this, they, the, the sergeant or the leader would say metanoia and they would go back the other way because it was a term meaning to turn in a different direction. It literally meant from going in one direction to another one. And in this message compilation, we are we are attempting to teach how to repent properly, because a lot of people say repentance means to turn away. But in the Greek, it actually means to change one's mind. But when you change your mind, you turn from the flesh and you turn to who you are in the spirit. And last week was an incredible message for me. I got a lot of good uh, feedback from that one because a lot of people didn't know that there is a two definition. There's two definitions of sin in the Bible. A lot of people didn't know that. And, and, and one person said, man, that set me free because a lot of people think that when we have struggles in the flesh that we lose Jesus. But you can't lose Jesus when he found you. You can't lose Jesus when he found you. So I was I was I was super blessed by that message last week. And this week, I don't plan on preaching long. I really, really don't. I'm trying to stay um, abreast of the time. But I'm going to just flow by the Holy Spirit because this message it's a foundational message. It's a foundational scripture that we are going to pull apart, that we're going to break apart. I say it every week. I preach it every week. I'm going to preach it every week until Jesus comes back. No matter what message compilation we are in, whether we are talking about relationships, whether we are talking about faith, whether we're talking about grace or mercy or, or we're talking about anything, we're talking about honor. It all comes and, and, and it's all, it all stems from this message right here, this scripture right here. So I want us to go to Romans 12, 1 through 2, New King James Version. Let me ask you this. Has anybody used the Blue Letter app since last week? No. <laughs> I felt so good in the beginning. <laughs> I felt so good in the beginning. And now I'm questioning my calling. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all getting that blue. I mean, listen, that blue letter Bible changed your life. We're going to get into it some more. I'm not going to tell you how to pull it out, but I'm going to just give you some things that um, the Holy Spirit revealed to me. Coming from Romans 12, 1 through 2, New King James Version. And the Bible says this. Watch this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God which is your reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the. Oh, okay, I'm going to read it again. I got to read it to you. I get to say to y'all say it strong and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. If you're taking notes, or you're taking notes in your phone, write this down. You can never prove in your body what you have not renewed in your mind. You will never prove in your body what you have not renewed in your mind. Whatever is happening in your life right now, you thought about it first. Any pattern in your life, any way of thinking in your life, any, 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 any conversation, anything, you thought about it first. Because everything comes from your way of thinking. I want to entitle this sermon. It's kind of weird. It's a concept sermon. I thought it was weird when the Holy Spirit gave it to me. I want to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Come on, man. Come on, man. Neighbor. neighbor. Transformers, Transformers. Versus robots. Versus robots. Which, one are you? which one are you? Look at your neighbor and say, which one are you? Transformers versus robots. Transformers versus robots. Um, for those of you who know me pretty well, you know that my favorite era of movies is 90s black cinema. Anybody who knows that knows me, you know that I love 90s black cinema. You know, I love people like John Singleton. I love people like Spike Lee. I love people like the Hughes brothers. I love I love I love movies like that. I love movies um, from the 90s. But other movies that I enjoy, I enjoy adventurous types of movies. I like movies like like Marvel. I like movies um, 
like 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 superhero movies or whatever. And another another um, franchise that I love is Transformers because I had the Transformer toys when I was a kid. Anybody here had Transformer toys when they were growing up? Nobody had Transformer toys. Ah, boy, y'all childhood was weak. Jeez, man. But I had Transformer toys growing up. And there was another movie that I always liked. And a lot of people thought it was weak, but I really enjoyed it. I like this movie um, Will Smith was in. It was called I, Robot. Anybody see I, Robot? Yes. All right. Did y'all like that movie? No. Yeah. It, for some people, it's, it's, like, it's like up in the air. Some people like it. Some people don't. Has anybody ever seen Transformers? Yes. Y'all like Transformers? Yes. Transformers was pretty cool. My wife don't like nothing, so you can't listen to her. She don't Listen, my wife liked them movies from Redbox that like them like them black ghetto movies. Like you don't like you don't know none of the actors. Those types of movies. Like my wife likes those like like in the black movies I like, it's gonna be a famous actor that's they probably they probably starting out or they the main character. My wife liked them movies on bounce. Y'all know what bounce is? She like my wife liked the movie. Y'all see y'all know that channel uh, Inspire? She like them type <laughs> she like them type movies, boy. She like them type movies. You can't ask my wife nothing. But but as I was as I was thinking about this sermon and I actually watched Transformers and I wrote about this week, I was I was sitting there thinking that if you look at these these two movies, both of these movies deal with machines. But but then I started to think that there are honestly two types of people in the body of Christ. There are people who are led and then there are people who are controlled. There are people who are led. And then there are people who are controlled. Now, 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 this is the thing. I do believe in being controlled by the Holy Spirit, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about there are people who are led by the Holy Spirit. And then there are people who are controlled by the law. There are people who are led by the spirit of God. And then there are people who are controlled by man. And, and, and watch this. Watch this. If you think about the Transformer movies, if you think about Bumblebee and, and Optimus Prime and was it Negatron? Is, that, is, that, is it Megatron or Negatron? Megatron. Say it again. Megatron. Megatron. I said Negatron. <laughs> Megatron. Megatron. <laughs> N-E-G-A. Negatron. Megatron. If you think about Optimus Prime and Megatron and, 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 and Bumblebee, if you think about the Transformers, nobody told the Transformers when to transform. They just knew when to do it. If they were in a sticky situation, they would go from the car into the full machine. But in our robot, those robots, they were programmed to move a particular type of way. They were programmed by man in order to move a particular type of way. And the goal of this sermon in our short time together, the goal of this sermon is to, is to, is to do this one thing. I want you to understand the difference between conforming to Christianity versus being transformed by Christ. Because there is a difference. There is a difference between conforming to Christianity than being transformed by Christ. So I want to pull this thing apart and I want to dig in it because I was talking to somebody one day and they told me something so profound. And I said I was going to put it in the sermon because the problem with most of the body of Christ is we try to operate in Christ, not understanding that Christ is operating in us. We live our whole lives trying to figure out the maneuvers of Christianity, not understanding that Christianity is about resting in Christ. Can I tell you something? Christianity is all about Jesus and less about you. That's why it's Christianity. It's not Canaan entity. It's not Jaira entity. It's not Lauren entity. It's not David entity. It's all about Christ. When you take the Christ out and put your works in it, it's no longer about Jesus. Watch this. Let's go back to the scripture. We're going to break this thing down. Stay with me. Stay with me. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Paul is saying, I am pleading with you by the mercies of God. Watch this. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. I like that word living sacrifice. It's not meaning that you are living to die. It means that because Jesus died, now you have the opportunity to live and you have the opportunity every single day to be submitted to the will of God and have him work through you. And not only are you a living sacrifice, but you are also holy. It means that you are set apart. Watch the next part. And then watch this, which is your reasonable service. Watch this. And do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, if you were like me, you grew up in church, well, no matter what church you went to, when you heard that term, do not be conformed to this world, rock with me, it was always preached, and you let me know if I'm wrong, don't be conformed to this world. 
So whatever the world does, you don't do it. Right. Stay with me. If the world looks like this, you ain't supposed to look like that. If the world talks like this, you ain't supposed to talk like that. If the world goes here, you ain't supposed to go there. But we have to think about that. Wait a minute, guys. What does it mean to dress worldly? What does it mean? What what is a worldly place? What is a what is a worldly conversation? Now, I do understand and some merit what they are saying. I do understand that there is a such thing as modesty. I understand that there are some places where sin takes place. So when people say, don't go to these places where the world goes, so they may mean the club. I understand what they are saying, but, but, but I wanna challenge that because maybe it is not a worldly place, it's just the things that are done in it is what makes it worldly. Maybe because this is the thing, this is the thing. We are in a building and the only reason we are having church is because we are the church. But if you cut on the right song, we still the church, but the vibe might be different. Right. And then we say, don't go to worldly places. Well, 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 well this is the thing. Jesus said you are in the world, but you're not of the world. Right. That's it. That's in John. I believe you are in the world, but you're not of the world. But the problem is. I'm always in the world. I'm always around people who are technically of the world. I can't remove myself unless I just stay in the house if I want to be separate from people who are in the world. And my question to that is, if I'm always separated from the world, how can I win them? Because I just I just don't understand when people say you're supposed to stay away from people who are unbelievers. Well, how can the unbeliever see Jesus? Now, I just did all of that explaining just to bring context, to bring familiarity to the scripture. But I'm going to challenge that through the true meaning of the text and say that that's not what Paul was talking about. Because whenever we see do not be conformed to this world and listen, just rock with me. When you was growing up, I remember somebody saying, because I used to wear Sean John a lot. I used to wear rock wear. And somebody came up to me. It was like, you can't be a Christian and wear Sean John. That's worldly. I'm, listen, listen, we got stories for days. Listen, I remember, I remember people saying, oh, you wearing rock aware? That's Jay-Z, ain't it? That's of the world. Well, they had on Tommy Hilfiger. Last time I checked, Tommy Hilfiger ain't casting out devils, laying hands on the sick. I, I, you know, yeah, exactly. Tommy Hilfiger had some issues back in the day. But, 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 but this is what we do. What we do is we compare my worldliness to yours. Oh, my God, we going here today. What we do is we say mine ain't that worldly, but yours is on a worldly plus 10. And if your worldly is on level 10 and my worldly on level one, then God will judge yours, but he won't touch mine. We, 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 we just we just do. We just do. And we say things that are just ridiculous in there. And they're honestly not in the Bible. But it's because we say, I'm not going to be conformed to this world. I'm not going to be conformed to this world. Do you even know what that means? Watch this. That word conformed in the Greek. This is a very tough word to say. I literally tried to say this word like a hundred times last night is the word. Suka, suka, shoot, suka, scum. Dang it. Suka, scum. God dang it. I did. Su ka makito. Su ska matiko. Su ska matiko. That's how I had to say it. Like, like, like. Su ska matiko. Su ska matiko. Su ska matiko. Su ska matiko. Okay, listen. It literally took me like 10 times to get that word last night. Su ska matiko. Everybody say su. Su. Ska matiko. Say su. Su. Ska matiko. With me. That word su ska matiko, it comes from the word schema. Everybody say schema. schema. That's where we get our English word schematics. Has anybody ever heard the schematics of a building? The schematics of a building, Dave, it's not the building itself, but it is the outline. Correct. The schematics of a car is not the car itself, but it is the outline of the car. So what Paul is saying is do not be fashioned after the pattern. Watch this. You can almost say illusion. Because it's not the building itself, but it is only a outline. You could say you could say based on that word, do not be fashioned or pattern after the illusion. Do not be pattern or fashion after the illusion of the world. Now, stay with me. 
That word world does not mean carnality. That word world does not mean sin. That word world, and you can look it up. It's in the Blue Letter Bible. This is why I want y'all to read it in the Blue Letter Bible version. It does not mean cosmos. Because the word for planet or natural world, it will be cosmos. But this word world in this text is actually aeon. Everybody say aeon. A-I-O-N, aeon. Watch this. That word aeon actually means present age. Stay with me. So what Paul is saying here is do not be patterned after the illusion of this present age. Now, if you would have never read that in, 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 a, in a Greek translation, you would not have known that because I didn't know it. But the problem is, stay with me. We look at, at, a, at a scripture of face value and then we listen to other people who are preached the same way. Not understanding that you have to do your due diligence and understand what Paul is saying in context. So what Paul is saying here is do not be patterned after the illusion of this present age. Every single one of us, we have been through a particular age. Right now, we are in the age of technology, correct? Okay, let's take music for an example. Are we still in the age of disco? No. Are we still in the age of rock and roll? Technically, what's the number one genre right now? Rap, hip hop. So we are in the age of rap, hip hop. Now, it doesn't matter when it will change. It just means that we are now in the age. Disco is over with. Um, 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 rock and roll is basically over with. They still make rock and roll music, but it's not as popular as rap. So we're in the age of rap. Watch this. What age was Paul during that time addressing the Roman church? He was addressing the Roman church because they were coming out of the age of the law. So what Paul was saying is do not be patterned or fashioned after the illusion of this age, which is the law. Because the law is only an outline of holiness, but it can't make you holy. It is a guideline of perfection, but it can't perfect you. So it's actually an illusion of Jesus, but it's not Jesus itself. So what he's saying is do not be conformed or pattern or, 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 or have the guideline or representation of the illusion of this present age. It's amazing that people preach that in a way to condemn people for what they wear, for where they go, and you're doing the very thing that Paul says not to do. Stay with me. You're teaching this text legalistically, and Paul says do not be conformed to the law. So when people preach this, you're actually contradicting the text. But this is the powerful part. He says, do not be patterned after the illusion of this present age, which is the law. Stay with me. But then watch this. Then the Bible says this, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word transformed is the Greek word metamorpho. Now, what word comes from that? Metamorphosis. Anybody ever had a, a mighty morphing power ranger growing up? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. My God, my son ain't got no toys. Stay with me. Now watch this. I used to have this. I used to have this Power Ranger growing up. Watch this. And, and it was actually pretty cool. What it would do is it was like the regular person's head. Right. So I think I had the Green Ranger. The Green Ranger was bad, boy, with the with the shoulder, with the gold shoulder pads. It was pretty fire. Watch this. So I think it was Tommy. Right. So on on top, the toy had Tommy's head. But whenever I push Tommy's head inside, the other helmet will come up. Y'all remember that toy? So you will push it down and then the other head will come up. That word metamorpho, stay with me. That word metamorpho does not mean just to take another shape. That word metamorpho means it means that what's on the outside is going to come out. What's on the inside is going to come out to the outside. So the same way that that Power Ranger would go in and the helmet would come up, what happens is when you understand who you are in Christ, the old head goes in and the new head comes out. But watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. So the Bible says be transformed or have a metamorphosis on what's on the inside to come out to the outside. And then it says by renewing of the mind. Watch me. That word renewing is powerful. That word renewing means renovation. Has anybody ever had their house renovated? OK. Has anybody ever seen a um, has anybody ever seen a restaurant renovated? Anybody ever had a favorite restaurant to where you went in there one time and looked one way? You go in there the next time and look totally different. 
because the restaurant has been renovated. Let me bring this whole scripture together for you. What Paul is really saying in this text, he's saying, do not be patterned after the illusion of this present age of the law, but have a metamorphosis of what's on the inside coming out to the outside by having a renovated mind. Literally take the old things of your mind and be renovated in your thinking. I want to be very, very simple and practical today. The only thing you are required to do under the new covenant is change your mind. That's it. I could stop right there. That is the only thing. That is the only thing that you are required to do under the new covenant is change how you think. Why is that the only thing that I'm required to do? Because Jesus fulfilled every other requirement. Watch this. The Bible says in John, they asked Jesus, how do I work the works of God? Jesus said, believe on whom God has sent. Who did God send? Jesus. So when I believe in him, I have fulfilled the new work. Remember the series we did at the beginning of the year? The new work. That's the only work you have to do. Watch this. Under the new covenant, under the old covenant, I changed my behavior. Under the new covenant, I changed my belief. Under the old covenant, I promise we almost done. Under the old covenant, I changed my behavior. Under the new covenant, I changed my belief. Let me tell you something. This is very simple. You will never live above your belief. Point blank, period. You will never live above what you believe. If you believe God's not pleased with you, you won't live above that. If you watch this, if you don't believe, if you don't believe that God loves you, no matter what you do, you won't live above that. Period. Because it all comes down to your belief. Joseph Prince said this two or three years ago. This one, this one quote started me on this journey by the man of God, Joseph Prince. He said, right believing leads to right living. The moment I saw that, David, my life changed because I always thought. That right living leads to right relationship. That's how that's what most of us thought, that if I live right, then my relationship with God will be tight. But that's not what it is. I'm going to say something radical. God cares more about your belief than he does your actions. God cares more about your belief than he does your actions, because if I change the belief, the action will change. We do so much behavior modification that we don't check people's belief. But the only reason people behave how they behave is because of what they believe. Period. So let's get into this thing because we got to go. Number one, watch this. This is the difference between transformers and robots. Number one, transformers are not from this planet, but robots are man-made. Stay with me. Transformers are not from this planet, but robots are man-made. Last time I checked, I think transformers are from Cybertron. Transformers are not from this, not from this world. They're not from this world. Watch this. Transformers are not from this world and neither are you. The Bible says this in Philippians 3.20. For our citizenship is in heaven, for, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So watch this. Not only are you not from this planet because your citizenship is in heaven. Watch this. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled unto God. So watch this. If you are not from this planet and not only are you not from this planet, you are sent here to be ambassadors for Christ. It is not my job to make you like something God didn't call you to be. It is not my job. Here we go. Let's go here. It is not my job to change who you are into who I want you to be. It is not my job to make loyal church members. It is my job to point you to the assignment of which God gave you. If you are an ambassador for somebody, that means that you go everywhere representing somebody else. Listen to me. You represent Jesus before you represent Ready Church. You are not called to be a church member. You are called to be an ambassador. But the problem is... When you don't understand who you are, somebody will always tell you who you are. I repeat it. When you don't understand who you are, somebody will tell you who you are. And for most of the body of Christ, we got people who don't know who they are in Christ. So they follow after the pattern of a man. So because they don't know who they are in the spirit, then they follow somebody after the flesh because they have no idea who they are. Listen, I understand that every church 
has a culture. I understand that in every church, there are there are different ways of doing things. But the problem is you should never let your church culture define your doctrine of the word of God. The doctrine of the word of God defines the culture. If it's not in the Bible, it shouldn't be in your culture. Control should not be in the culture. Manipulation should not be in the culture. Now, holiness can be in the culture, but holiness will only be in the culture when you realize that you're only holy by the blood of Jesus. But when you try to infect holiness into a culture and it's only based on your behavior, that is when you will have people who will be man made. So now they follow after the pattern of leadership and not of the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Let's move to number two. Watch this. Now watch this. Number two. Transformers are led. Robots are programmed. Let's go here for a minute. Transformers are led. Robots are programmed. Watch me. Here we go. The Bible says in Romans 8, 14, that those who are led by the spirit of God are the those who are led by the spirit of God are the those who are led by the spirit of God are the so you are a that word son is plural. So it means women and men. So you are a and you can say you are a daughter. So for the men, you are a for the women, you are a listen, the problem with a lot of people in the body of Christ, we have the mentality of an orphan, but we don't have the mentality of a son. We have the mentality of orphans, but we don't have the mentality of sons. Watch me. Has anybody ever worked with uh, children who have been adopted? Yes. OK, let me ask you a question. Correct me if I'm wrong. Children who are adopted when they go into a stable environment, don't they sometimes have issues with adopting to the new environment yes. because they have not been raised in it? So they have to transform or they have to conform their behavior to the new environment. And if you only experience chaos, it is going to be hard to have stability in a new environment because you are an orphan. If you are an orphan, most likely you have the belief that you don't belong. You have the belief that you don't deserve it. You have the belief that you're not supposed to be there, so you wrestle with being there. Can I give you some Fresh Prince-ology? I love going here. I love it when in, in, in every episode of the Fresh Prince, Carlton and Will will always go back and forth because Will's mom was in Philadelphia, but he was in Bel Air. So Will thought that, that Philadelphia was better than Bel Air, not understanding that Carlton, he was a son, but technically Will was an orphan. You see, when you understand that you are a son, you don't have to change your behavior because you already are what the orphan is trying to be. I repeat it. When you understand that you are a son, when you understand that you are a son, the Bible says, watch this. The Bible says in Romans that we have received the spirit of adoption where we cry out, Abba, Father. Watch this. I have been made a son because his spirit is now in my spirit. And I share this and I share the same spirit with Jesus. So if Jesus is a son, I am a son. But the problem is we don't know how to be led because we don't understand we are sons. When you understand you are a son, then you understand that you are led. You see, robots are programmed. You see, robots, they need to be told where they can't go, what they can't do, who they shouldn't hang out with, because they don't know how to be led. And the problem is, let's go here. The problem is, as the body of Christ, we have taught people how to be Sunday morning believers. Let me tell you what that means. Sunday morning believers are people who are dependent upon the teaching on Sunday to help them maneuver instead of having a relationship with God. Now, watch this. Watch this. This is a tool. This is a guide. This is meant to help you. But if you only know God based on what the pastor tells you, you are programmed. Listen. This is why I want you all to be students of the scripture. This is why I don't mind you coming with me with with, with debates and, and, and with fact checking. I love when Nicole does that because it lets me know that you understand that I am not Jesus. I am only a person who is depending on Jesus to get the word from the Lord to give it to you. I am not the one you should be depending on. And the problem is. We teach people how to depend on leadership, but not depend on the Holy Spirit. Because watch this, watch this. When you depend on the Holy Spirit, he will tell you how to look. He will tell you where to go. He will tell you how to give. He will tell you all of these things. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. 
The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. But when you don't know how to be led, then you will depend on the programming. So I don't know how to be led on how to give. So you have to tell me. I don't I don't I don't I don't know how to be led on how to navigate the scriptures. So you got to tell me how much I should read. And then if you tell me how much I should read, then if, if I don't read it now, I feel condemned because I'm depending upon the program. But I'm not depending upon being led. You see, watch this in the Transformer movies. Nobody had to tell Bumblebee to go into action. He did it on his own. Right or wrong. When Bumblebee saw trouble, he transformed. He knew what to do. But you see, in our robot, the robots had no choice because they were already in a man-made form. They were programmed. Their responses were programmed. Every, every, everything of how they thought it was programmed. You see, the problem is we have people who are machines, but they don't understand ministry. We have people, they built a certain way, they talk a certain way, they move a certain way. And watch this. If you don't move how they move, then your Christianity ain't real. If you don't look how they look, then your Christianity ain't real. But this is the thing, y'all. Listen to me, because I really want y'all to understand this. This is why I need you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is why I need you to get a revelation of who you are, because I am not trying to create a bunch of other Canaan Greers. That is not who you are. You are made in the image of God. Let me tell you something. If I made you like me, then you are no good to me. Oh, y'all missed that. If you are, if Dave is just like me, he's no good to me. I need Dave to be Dave because Dave has an anointing for this ministry that I need to tap into. But when you don't realize your own anointing, you will grab somebody else's. Let me tell you something. If there's anything you get from this sermon today, you better realize your own anointing. You better realize your own calling. You better understand who God is calling you to be. Do you not understand how bad God created you to be? Do you not understand that God has made you so special, so unique? Do you not understand that God gave you your own purpose, your own DNA? Why are you wasting your time trying to be like somebody else? Why? Listen, everybody in here, don't be trying to be like me. And I ain't saying you are, but I don't want you to be like me. I'm, listen, I look up to some of y'all. But as I look up to some of y'all, I can't change who I am. But the problem is, y'all, have you ever been somewhere and you walk in and everybody look alike? Everybody look alike. You know what? You know, you know, one thing I, I never understood. I never understood. I never understood how like when people went to the club, like like a group of dudes go to the club. They all got on the same outfit. <laughs> what? Who, whose mans are these? Like, like for real, I remember, bro, I remember one time, bro, I remember one time, this is no cap. This is no cap. I remember one time I was walking downtown, walking downtown, and then I had on some new, the new joints, the new J's that came out that weekend. I think they were the nines. Bro, when I tell you, I'm walking past the joint, and I see six dudes in line. They all got on the nines. They all got on some, what's some joints they, they just came out, them Levi's, them, um, 501 Levi's and them Burberry shirts. I said, man, I don't even want these shoes no more. I don't even want them. I don't even want them no more. You know, that's the baby shower outfit. You know, we go to the baby shower, that Burberry outfit. I don't, why, why they be wearing them joints to baby showers? I don't understand that. I don't know why black people do that. Who, where they come from? But anyway, but they all dressed like they were going to the baby shower. And I'm like, dude, y'all think that's cool? Like, no, where is the individuality? But the problem is we don't know how to be individuals because we don't know how to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach you who you are. The Holy Spirit is not going to program you to look and think like somebody else. The Holy Spirit will show you your anointing. The Holy Spirit will show you your purpose. The Holy Spirit will show you who you are. Listen, when, you, when you're wrestling with who you are, rest in Jesus. The only reason you wrestle with who you are is because you don't understand that Jesus gave you an identity. Jesus made you different. We are afraid to be different in church. We, we want to look like everybody. We want to look like each other. No, because watch this, watch this, watch this. You dishonor what, G, what Jesus did in your life when you try to become like somebody else. Oh, my God. Let me give you this revelation real quick. Watch this. Watch this. I was doing some research one time. Anybody got that blue letter Bible out? Just go there real quick. Just real quick. Just pull it out and go there real quick. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.10, watch this, that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Pull it up real quick. Go to Ephesians 2.10. Go to Ephesians 2.10. 
Watch this. Go to Ephesians 2.10 and hit the scripture. When you hit the scripture, go to the word workmanship. Anybody got it yet? Let me know if you got it. Go to the word workmanship. What is that word in the Greek? Poema. Listen to this revelation. Poema. You know what that word poema comes from or what word comes out of that? Poem. So when you read we are God's workmanship, you know what that means? That you are God's poem. But it's so sad that you are God's poem, but you sing in somebody else's lyrics. You are God's poem. Listen to that. You are God's poem. You are God's poem. Have you ever read Psalms? There's a bunch of songs and poems. You are his poem. You are literally God's words. You are God's words created in flesh. In the spirit, there is a poem. Kristen, you a poem. Bianca, you a poem. Jamaica, you a poem. David, you a poem. Chris, you a poem. Uh, 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 Drew, you a poem. Isaiah, you a poem. Jair, you a poem. Cameron, you a poem. But what is the point of being a poem, but you singing somebody else's lyrics? What is the point if I'm a poem, but I'm trying to read David's? And I'm so impressed by David's because I don't understand my own. And that's what we do in the body of Christ. So watch this. We are so enamored by the poem of the leadership. We're so enamored that we don't understand who we are. When you understand you are God's poem, then you will understand who you are. This is the last point. This is the last point. Isaiah, could you move this over for me, please? I appreciate it. This is the last point, and we're going to go home. We're going to go home today. Watch this. Just move this right here. Transformers are always being renewed. Thank you. But robots are built to be ruined. Transformers are always renewed. But robots are built to be ruined. You see, anything that's man-made is built to be ruined. You see, you ever notice when a new iPhone come out, your, your old iPhone start tripping? You ever notice that? You ever notice that? Because it's built to die. So robots are. He built to die. They ain't going to last forever. Sooner or later, it's going to get old. You see, the Bible says, watch this. The Bible says that the outward man perish, but the inner man is being what? Renewed day by day. So your spirit is already, is already always being renewed. Your spirit is always ready. But the problem is the reason why, watch this, the reason why people want to be robots built to be ruined is because they don't understand the pureness of Jesus. They don't understand the pureness of the gospel. They don't understand the pureness of Jesus. You see, most of us growing up, we, we, didn't, we didn't get the pureness of Jesus. We didn't get Jesus by itself. Let, let, let's go here for a minute. I have been accused of watering down the gospel. Now, I don't mind it because I kind of knew it was going to go that way. But people have said and I'm talking about people have literally inboxed me and said, bro, I, I think you're watering down the gospel. So instead of responding, because the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me on responding, it's been very tough. It's been very tough, y'all. My wife had to rebuke me the other day. It's been very tough. And, and, and I started to meditate as I was walking through Target one day. What does it mean to water down the gospel? Because that's a man-made term. But I want to know, are we using it properly? Be, be, because, 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 this, because this is the thing. This is the thing. Come here, Jamaica. Come here. Because, because the gospel, the gospel, it is good on its own. It's, 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 good, it's good on its own. Now, um, now, now, now we're going to say that this is the gospel. This is the gospel. Go ahead and drink some of that. I'm going to take a little sip. I'm going to get you some. Go ahead. It's good. Go ahead and drink some more. It's good, right? Go ahead and drink some more. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's good, right? Okay. Now, now, now this is the thing. The gospel is good on its own. It's the pureness of the gospel. It's the pureness of Jesus. You see, the law is not the gospel. The prophets in the Bible is not the gospel. The gospel is literally the too good to be true news, which is Jesus. But you know what we do, y'all? This is what we do. What we do is we add things to Jesus. 
So this is what we say. Oh, you're saved. But if you don't look like this, then God can't bless you. So we add water. And then we say stuff like, oh, God loves you, but you got to earn and maintain his love for you. So we add water to it. So then this is what else we say. We say, oh, you're healed of the Lord. But if you don't tithe, you can experience God's healing. So we add to the gospel. And then this is what we do. We say, hey, you're saved. But if you sin enough times, you'll bust head wide open. And then we add to the gospel. And then we also say stuff like, hey, what are you doing listening and watching that? Don't you know that Jesus is sitting next to you? Don't you understand? Don't you understand that if you watch that, God can't bless you? And then we add to the gospel. Jamaica, drink that. Drink that. It's pretty trash, right? Pretty nasty. Pretty, nasty, pretty disgusting. Mm -hmm. And we wonder why young people don't want to come to church. And we wonder why millennials want to leave the church. And we wonder why Gen Xers challenge the church. And we wonder why Gen Zers after us are not going to ever want to know what Jesus is. Because we are giving people something that Jesus never wanted us to taste. That's right. That's right. Yes. Jesus never wanted you to taste that. He wanted you to taste him in his purest form. But we don't give people the pureness of the gospel. We give we give people Jesus and we add to it. But you know what the sad part is? This is all what people know. This is all they know. This is all what people know. They don't know Jesus by himself. They know Jesus with the add ons. They don't know the pureness of the gospel, Bianca. They know Jesus with water. They know Jesus with law. They know Jesus with everything else. But listen, Jesus plus nothing equals everything. When you understand that Jesus has already given himself for you, when you understand the message of the gospel is pure on its own, if you preach the message of Jesus, when you preach the goodness of God, the Bible says in Romans that the goodness of God leaded to repentance. God is good on his own. You ain't got to add to it. You ain't got to add to it. Let's be honest, y'all. We drank this most of our lives. And let's be honest. You know what we did? You know what we did? We knew it was nasty, but we had to keep drinking it because we were, we were, we were afraid that we weren't going to be full. You know, what, you know what we do? We drink this and we say, fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Yeah, I know why you say fill me up. Because you ain't full. You don't believe you're full. But when you drink the pureness of Jesus, you understand that I'm already full. You ain't got to fill me back up. That's why that's why we keep asking God for more because you're drinking the stuff that's nasty. But when you drink what's good, you understand that it never runs out. That's the gospel, guys. That's all I want people to understand is that Jesus is good on its own. That's it. I'm not trying to manipulate people. I don't want you to live in sin. I don't want you to do none of that stuff. But when you drink from Jesus alone, that's when your mind will change. That's when your life will change. I cannot give you Jesus plus anything else. I can't do it no more. I just can't. I can't. I have to give you Jesus by yourself. When I give you the pureness of Jesus, the pureness of Jesus, that's when your life will change. That's when your life will change. Thank you so much, Jamaica. Thank you. Y'all give her a hand, please. Listen, when, when you when you when you just when you just when you just drink Jesus, just drink Jesus, just Jesus. The Bible says, watch this. Jesus said you can't put new wine in old wine skins. You know what that means? You can't put the new covenant in the old covenant because it's mixture. It's mixture. I can't mix the covenants no more, guys, because watch this. I, listen, this is what mixture looks like. It's disgusting. You know that scripture in Revelation where it talks about whether you're hot or cold, if you're whether you're hot or cold, but if you look warm, I spit you out my mouth. That's what that's talking about. The old and the new covenant. If you're lukewarm, I spit you out my mouth because God hates mixture. But you know what we call mixture balance. That's what we do. Oh, I understand grace, but you got to balance it with the law. Oh, you know, we say, watch this. Now, I've heard this before. Oh, we preach grace, but we don't preach truth. You know, the Bible says in John 1, 17, that the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Christ Jesus. We say, oh, we preaching grace, but we ain't preaching truth, not understanding that in the Greek, those are both the same words. 
Those are one word in the Greek. Grace and truth is the same thing because you can't have grace without truth and you can't have truth without grace. You got to have both. It's the same thing. And both of them are in Jesus. Without Jesus, there is no truth. And without Jesus, there is no grace. Simple as that. Simple as that. We complicate the scriptures, guys. We complicate the scriptures. We complicate it. We complicate it. And then watch this. We complicate the wrong things. We'll complicate something that's not supposed to be complicated. And then we'll simplify the stuff that ain't supposed to be simple. That Romans 12, 1 through 2. Like, look at how deep we got into that today. But you probably haven't heard that in most churches because they just preach it because we want to be changed by behavior. But listen to me and I'm done. If you just change your belief, your behavior will change. If you change your belief, your behavior will change. Watch this. If you want to stop eating donuts, change your belief about donuts. I heard Snoop Dogg tell a story one time on a breakfast club. He said that, man, he used to love eating hot dogs, love eating hot dogs. But one day he saw how hot dogs were made. And he said when he saw how hot dogs were made, he couldn't eat it no more. He said he stayed in a hotel and there was always a hot dog stand right in front of the hotel. And he would come out. He would come out and the dude would be like, hey, Snoop, I got your hot dog ready. And he would just run because he didn't want the hot dog no more. What did Snoop do? He changed his mind. Listen. And uh oh, I'm about to mess you up. You know, you ain't got to be saved to walk into this principle. It's just a principle. It's sad that the world knows how to do it, but we don't. Because all you got to do is change your mind. That's it. Change your mind. Change your mind. That's it. Change your mind about something. Renew your mind. The problem is you try to change your behavior, but you don't change your mind. Because the reason we don't like grace is because, like I said last week, the law produces faster results than grace. I'm, be I'm being for real. I'm being for real. I can get up here and tell you what not to do. I can get up here and tell you what not to do. I can get up here and tell you you better not, you better not lie, you better not cheat, you better not fornicate. I can, I can tell you all that. And you will stop. You will stop. But the problem is you will beat yourself up over it because you can't stop thinking about it. You can't stop thinking about it. Can't stop thinking about it. I remember there was a young man dealing with suicide. I think that was about two years ago I talked to him. Dealing with suicide. This is when I first got into this thing. I was on fire, y'all, on fire. And he, he, and he kept saying, man, I just, I just wish, I just wish God would love me more, man. I just feel like I ain't nothing. I feel like I ain't nobody. And the Holy Spirit right there in that moment, it reminded me of what I read one time. Because suicide is only the results of anxiety and stress. And at the root of anxiety and stress is fear. And at the root of fear it's condemnation. Whether people know it or not, anybody who is suicidal, anxious, walking in fear, paranoid, at the root of it, they don't believe that God is pleased with them. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, at the root of every issue, they don't believe that God is pleased with them besides it beyond their works. That's what that's what they believe. But watch this. I don't care about the suicide. Let me get to that condemnation. Let me preach grace to that condemnation. And I guarantee you that whole tree of all. Let, you walk up to somebody who is suicidal and tell you, hey, you know, you know, God loves you beyond what you're feeling right now. You know, God loves you beyond what you've done and who you are. You know, God is not looking at who you are, but he's but he's looking at you based on who you are in the spirit. And they'll look at you like you're crazy. But keep ministering to him. That root will come up. That root will come up. Let me tell you something. When you preach the grace of God, you ain't got to lay your hands on them and scream at them for 104 times trying to get a spirit to come out. You preach grace, that spirit to come out. Right. Preach the grace of God, that thing will come out. It'll come out on its own. You ain't got to spit, scream, and holler and all that trying to command something to come out with your voice. When you understand who you are in Christ and you teach the message of grace to somebody, they'll come out the pit on their own. They'll come out. You change your belief, your behavior will change. Do not be conformed to the to the to the to the uh, illusion of the age, but be metamorpho, have a metamorphosis by the renovation of your mind. Renovate your mind, your life will change. Let's pray. Father God in Jesus.